Think about how you learned, at least I hope you learned, how to tie your shoelaces. How did you learn to tie your shoelaces? Uh, and the short answer is, you did not spend like some two week intensive where all you did was tie shoelaces all day, every day, and they're like, now I know how to tie shoelaces. You just tied your shoelaces like once a day, or if you're more like me, like once a week, uh, over a long period of time, and then that process, as complicated as it is, it's quite complicated, and you'll know that if you ever teach someone how to try and tie a knot, that complicated process got into your brain and you could do it without even thinking. You could probably do it without even looking at your shoes right now, right? We're gonna do the same with this and I encourage you to do it regularly, to have that over time, just touch back on them, come back to them over and over again, rather than try and do it in an intensive way. This morning, we introduced this idea and some of these are easy because we did them on the circle and other ones will take a little bit more work. What was the very first one we had a look at? It's actually at the bottom. We looked at a full revolution, right? 360 degrees, we said on a unit circle, if you had a 360 degree angle, how far would you go around the circumference to make that? On the unit circle, how far would you go? All the way around, which in the unit circle, what length is that? Is 2 pi. And so that's what we call the radian measure for that angle. 360 degrees, it's 2 pi. I think the next one we did was half of that, wasn't it? So 180 degrees in radians, that will be? Pi radians. Uh, and then we went, I think we halved again, didn't we? So we got up to 90 degrees. So if I halve again, I'm going to get pi on 2. Now, those are the ones which we sort of know, but you might have noticed I've actually got a much longer list because these are pretty much the ones which, yes, you will definitely have to have memorized because they come up so frequently, just like you saw before in regular trig with degrees. So let's, now that we've got the ones we know, let's just go from the top. You can see, by the way, I've got these, which are lots of 45 in a different color. Um, this is also a lot of 45 and also a lot of 30, so that's why it's in blue, but I've indented it. And then these are just the most common ones you're going to get, which are bigger than one. Okay, that there are others you'll see as well. Let's go from the top. Zero degrees. How many radians do you think that's going to be? Zero. zero. Good. It's not like Fahrenheit and Celsius, which have different zeros. Those are super confusing. When we go to 30 degrees, I think the easiest way to think about it is 30 degrees is a sixth of 180 degrees. It's a sixth. So therefore, if this is pi, then to get from 180 degrees to 30 divided by 6, so this should be? Uh, pi on 6. Pi on six. Pi on 6. All right, we already actually did 45 degrees. It was one of the examples. It's pi on 4. Very good. Now, when you go from 30 to 60, you're doubling, aren't you? So instead of pi on 6, you'll get pi on 3. Very good. That's 2 pi on 6, isn't it? There's pi on 3. And hopefully you're noticing, because that's the way fractions work, right? The denominator is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, right? 6, 4, 3, 2. We get to 120 degrees, which is the easiest, how do you express this in terms of what we've already got? Yeah, very good, say it louder. 2 pi 3, nailed it, because it's double the 60 that you already see there. Okay, 135. Oh, this is double this. So I doubled 60 to 120, pi 3 to 2 pi 3. Yep. 135. 3 pi 4, because it's three lots of 45 degrees. 3 pi on 4. So we're going around 45 again. Say it again, sorry. We're going around 45 to check if it's 3 pi or 2 or 3 pi. Uh, that's right, it's, it's this one. Hold on, are you talking about 135 degrees? Yeah, so it's going to be 3 pi on 4 because it's how many lots of this have I got? It's 3 of these and that was pi on 4. Okay, um, I'm doing all of the lots of 30 and all of the lots of 45 all the way up to 180. So my last stop here is 150 degrees. Have a look. The difference between 180 and 150 is 30. Right? So it's one of these, take away one of these. It's going to be 5 pi on 6, or if you like, 5 lots of that. Both are the same. 5 pi on 6. And then my last one that I've got in this sort of canonical list, 270 degrees. Have a look on the list. What would you say that's in terms of? 270. Three. It's 3 lots of 90, right? 3 lots of 90. We already established that 90 is that. So it's 3 of these. 3 pi on 2. Yeah? So basically, uh, not to lean too much into lunchtime, as you're in radians, you're just going to think of everything in terms of pies. Everything in terms of pies. Um, if this is a straight angle, right? If you want something less than a straight angle, you're going to have less than a pie. And if you've got something more than a straight angle, you're going to have 
more than a pi, right? So 3 pi and 2, that's going to be a, a, hold on, my finger, my arms can't go around the right way, uh, a reflex angle, right? 3 pi on 2, 270 degrees. All right, now, you might recall when we were learning exact values the first time, we drew a pair of triangles, the ones on your reference sheet. Now, the ones on the reference sheet are in degrees, but we're trying to get ourselves into a new mode. So let's start with this guy here. This exact right angle triangle, you might recall it's got a 1 and a 2 on the hypotenuse. Does anyone remember what the other length is? It's a third. Here you go. Very good, it's root 3. Now, we called this... What are the angles in this one? We usually call it the 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, 90. Which angle would normally be 30 degrees? The one at the bottom. The one at the top. You can see that's why I've drawn it nice and thin. But we don't want to write 30 degrees. We would want to write pi on 6, right? So I'm going to pop pi on 6 up there. All right, so this is 30 degrees, pi on 6 radians. If this one is 60 degrees, it should be pi on 3. Very good. Now. You've already got the right angle there telling you its size, but just for completeness, let's write this in radians, right? 90 degrees, the right angle, it's going to be pi on 2. And of course, because you know what the angle sum of a triangle is, right? Pi on 6 plus pi on 3 plus pi on 2. How many radians will that be? Pi. It'll be pi, because that's the 180 degrees, right? All right, so that's that guy. You've also got this other triangle, the isosceles one. So if you make those both one, then our hypotenuse is going to be... It's the, it's the third again, right? So this is the square root of two. That's what I meant to say. Yep, good. You've got your pi on two here, which we already just looked at. And then these two angles are usually what? Usually? In degrees? 45. 45 degrees. So we've already established that instead of 45, we should write... We should write? Pi and four. Pi and four, thank you very much. Pi and four here, pi and four also here. All right. One last thing. When we were, and this is where we're leading, right? When we were solving trigonometric equations in the past, you may recall we used this uh, quadrants diagram. Do you remember that? And then we would say all stations to central. Is this ringing a bell? Yeah. Right? Some of you are less familiar with this because it was looked at in 5.3, but hopefully we can remind you of it. When we use this, we would say, oh, this is acute angles, not to 90, right? But I'm not going to say not to 90 degrees anymore. I'm going to say not to... Hmm. Not 90 degrees. Pi on 2, right? So I'm going to say in this quadrant, I'm going to write uh, 0 is less than, let's call it theta, could call it x, doesn't matter, uh, is less than pi on 2. That's the, the range of angles you can have in there, from naught to pi on 2 radians. When you go over here into obtuse angles, right? Obtuse angles in degrees, we would say that's between 90 and 180, but I'm not going to say that because I'm in radians. Instead, I'm going to say pi on 2 all the way up to pi, very good. And I can continue. Can you finish off the rest of the diagram? Have your third quadrant down here. So 270 degrees is, have a look, 3 pi on 2. So I go from pi all the way up to 3 pi on 2. And then my last one down here, 3 pi on 2 all the way up to 2 pi. That's the end. Okay. Now, something that is worth adding into this, it's why I've left all this space in the middle of these quadrants, is when you work out the solutions in each of these, right? For an acute angle, you'd say, well, it's just whatever that angle is. And when you work out its equivalent over here, you used to say it was 180 degrees minus whatever that base angle was. But I'm not going to say that anymore. Instead of 180 degrees minus theta, I'm going to say... Where's 180 degrees? There it is. I'm going to say pi minus theta, right? When you're coming up with a solution for a trigonometric equation, which we're about to do shortly. Here, it's not pi minus theta, it's pi plus theta. You're getting bigger. Pi plus theta. And then the last one, we usually would say 360 degrees, take away your base angle, but I'm not going to say 360, I'm going to say 2 pi, take away that angle. Okay, 